Okay, I'm back, and now we want to continue to study for the Unit 1 lecture exam. And so the next lesson that we did was lesson number 9, which was on atoms. So this was found in chapter uh, 11, sections 2, 3, 4, and 5, uh, chapter 13, sections 8 and 9, and then chapter 32, section 4. So you should know what the definition of an atom is. Make sure and know the definition of an atom. And there is the definition of an atom. Okay, then you should know that atoms are very, very small. You don't need to know how small they are, but you do need to know that you cannot see an atom by using visible light. So even using the best possible microscope from biology, using visible light, you cannot see an individual atom. Uh, however, by using an electron microscope, you can. Okay, then definitely you should know the parts of the atom. So you should know that it has a nucleus that consists of protons and neutrons, and then the electrons are in orbit around the nucleus. You should know the charge on the electron, the proton and the neutron, and you should know that protons and neutrons are much, much bigger than what electrons are. And then uh, you should have this idea that the electrons do not orbit around the nucleus like little planets. So instead, what they do is they make, they're kind of like a swarm of electrons that have specific uh, volumes uh, surrounding the nucleus. Uh, you don't need to know the mass of a typical atom, but you do need to know that they're so small that you cannot weigh a single atom on the best possible scales that we have. Okay, then what holds the atom together? So this is from the next lesson when we talk about uh, electrostatics. So you should know that it's the electromagnetic force that holds the atom together. So opposites attract. The positive nucleus and the negative electrons are going to be attracted to each other. And so don't worry about that formula yet, but you are going to need to know that formula for electricity. Uh, that's Coulomb's law, and you will need to know that in the next uh, lesson. Okay, now I'm going to give you a periodic table of elements. It may not look exactly like this one, but you should be able to find the atomic number of a particular element and then know what's the significance of the atomic number and then do not worry about the atomic mass which is the number that has the decimal point and then another thing about the periodic table is you should be able to count the number of columns because the number of columns is going to tell you the number of outer electrons that that particular element is going to have all right, so here again is the number that does not have a decimal point is going to be the atomic number. That's the number of protons. And then if that particular element is neutral, that number is also going to be the number of electrons that that element is going to have, the total number of electrons it's going to have. Also, you should know what an ion is. So the definition of an ion. Okay, uh, and then another thing about the ion that I forgot to mention is if I tell you here is the atom and then let's say that I pull off three electrons, what now is the charge on this element? You should be able to do that. Or if I tell you what the element is and we add two electrons to it, you should be able to tell me now what is the charge on that element when it's been ionized. All right, this is very, very important. So the atomic hotel. Knowing the first two floors 
of the Atomic Hotel. So you don't need to know all the floors, just the first two. And so on the first floor, you have two electrons. And on the second floor, you've got two rooms. One room holds two electrons, and the other room holds six. So you should know the numbers two and six. And you should also know that the twos are called the S orbitals or the S subshells. And then the ones that can hold the sixes are going to be called the P's. Don't worry about the D's and the F's. And then also don't worry about uh, that picture off to the side that shows the different orbitals and the shapes of the orbitals. You don't need to know that because that's in chemistry. But you should recognize there for magnesium, you see the rings. So those rings are the floors of the apartment building. So there's two different ways of picturing an atom. So you can picture it as the apartment building or you can picture it as a series of rings. But the, the rings are actually not a very good representation because it makes it seem like the electrons are orbiting the, the nucleus like little planets when they're not. So the rings are just representing the different energy levels. Okay, then how do you fill up the atomic hotel? All right, two rules. So one, you're going to uh, drop the electrons in. They want to go as low as possible. Okay, then if they have to go to the next level up, then we're going to go to rule number two, which is going to say that they'd rather go into the s orbital, which can hold two electrons. They'd rather go into that one before they go into the p orbital, which can hold six. And so by using these two rules, we can explain uh, that if you drop one electron in there, it goes to the ground floor, the 1s orbital. That's hydrogen. We drop two electrons in, they both go into the 1s orbital, that's helium. Okay, so I could, I could ask you uh, if I, we drop so many electrons in there, how, which uh, orbitals are they going to go into? So a question like that. And then we had the uh, outer electrons. So the outer electrons are called the valence electrons. And in order to know how many outer electrons an element has, you look at the column it's in. So if it's in column number one, which is over on this side over here, that means it has one outer electron. If it's in column two, it's got two outer electrons. And then notice that when you add all of those columns together, you get the number eight, which is the magic number in chemistry. That all in, in a chemical reaction, they will beg, borrow, steal electrons so that an element thinks it's in column number eight. It wants to get to this magic number of eight. Okay, so let's take a break, and when we come back, let's talk about reactivity on the periodic table.